I'm here at Aplands Weir, uh, which is on the Ross River in Townsville. And um, as we can see today, the weir is, there's no water flowing over it. Um, but in 2019, in February, we had huge flooding in Townsville. And this was, had water rushing over it, um, probably almost over a metre above the weir. So this all area was well underwater and um, what I wanted to do is have a look around and see what plants have grown after all the devastation of the floods. Now um, a lot of them will be weeds but it will be interesting to see if any mangroves have survived. At the base of the weir there's these huge rocks which are obviously here to stop erosion when the water is flowing. But we can see there's a bunch of weeds that have sprouted up. These particular ones, um, I haven't been able to find out what they are. They do seem to be spread throughout Townsville. Um, I've seen them out at the James Cook as well. We've also got these purple bush beans. We can see these characteristic purple flowers and um, they have these tiny little beans as well. These are really common weed uh, around Townsville as well. I'm just going to walk a little bit further down the river and uh, see what we can find. At the base of the weir we've got the Ross River which flows into um, out to sea. So this bit here is actually tidal and uh, it's low tide at the moment. It's about 60 centimeters above low tide and so that's low enough that we can walk around along the stream bed and actually have a look at some of the mangroves. The Ross River has quite a lot of mangrove systems all running along its lengths. Um, unfortunately a lot of them were severely damaged by the floods because all the areas where the mangroves were was pretty much underwater for well over a week. Um, and there was a lot of physical damage as the flow of the water tended to sweep a lot of them away. So you can see lots of um, sort of just tree stumps for where the mangroves are. But looking along here we can see that there's a few um, varieties which are now starting to recover, little plants. This one seems to have sprouted from an old trunk that uh, obviously survived the floods. This particular variety. This particular variety looks to be a milky mangrove and we can tell that by the pattern of the leaves that's in this each they're in this alternating pattern and also if you break a leaf you get a white milky sap. Now that sap is uh, poisonous and if you get it in your eyes it can blind you. So you've got to make sure we don't get that on us. Just at the base here we've got <laughs> all these dead mangroves but we've now got this tiny little club mangrove. Now club mangroves have a um, quite distinctive leaf structure where the leaves join onto the stems like they grow out of the stems with this sort of wraparound sheath which makes them actually quite easy to identify. I'm up a bit higher now from the river and um, we can see here there's a sprawling stinking passion flower plant. Um, this weed is uh, really quite common all throughout, well uh, certainly Queensland um, and it's, a, it's an edible plant the fruit itself, yeah, we might give it a try. Apparently the, it gets its name from the smell, the bad smell that the leaves make. So I haven't actually smelt them before. Let me have a look. It smells like leaves. I don't know, it's pretty um, benign smell. I think it's got a bad rap in terms of smell. Um, it's relatively easy to identify because it has 
these little It has these cages around each of the fruit that are slightly sticky and um, those are believed to possibly be a way of protecting the fruit from predation although that's what Wikipedia said. The passion, stinking passion flower fruit had a taste that's a little bit like passion fruit but it kind of reminded me the aftertaste of perhaps really ripe oranges like that have gone a little bit too far I mean that was quite a ripe fruit so maybe I haven't tried different varieties but pleasant enough though there's one other weed that I want to show you today and uh, it's called a coromandel it's just here it has these uh, white flowers sometimes they're purple and um, it has sort of seed pods once they're mature and uh, this is quite an invasive weed um, and it breaks off really easily so if you're trying to uh, rip it out it just breaks off and leaves the roots and uh, it's a real challenge to get rid of it I had some in my backyard and um, to get rid of it the challenge is that if you pull up the plant and you leave any of the roots in there then those roots sort of like regrow like seeds so you actually have to loosen all the ground around the plant and then gently pull it up so that you get all the fine roots that come with it um, otherwise it just re-sprouts in a couple of weeks so it's really hard work trying to get rid of this this plant seems to have come up a few places um, around town and um, yeah being in the river system means that what, during floods it can get washed downstream and um, populate other areas along the stream shoreline at the top of the weir we've got all the water that's held back in the river and um, just behind us here is where they've done a lot of revegetation um, and so all of these trees are actually re uh, were planted I think like 30 years ago um, luckily just about all of them survived the floods um, and that whole area is uh, really quite lush and green and there's lots of little water plants as well in this area well that's my quick look at the plants around the base of Aplands Weir most of them are weeds unfortunately but the mangroves that are surviving there will hopefully grow in latter years and it'll be interesting to come back um, and see how they've grown in a few years all right see you next time